woman kind of switched gears for a moment, and she just, she sings this song called Design. And um, if you will um, allow the word, the, the amazing thing is we were practicing this morning over songs and even before, and I was just praying. I was like, God, you know, your word never goes out void. And so whether it is a scripture, whether it's a word, or whether it is a song, his word never goes out void. But instead, it changes our lives if we will allow it to. Jamie's going to come. She's going to pray with us. She's going to... Um, say a few words and uh, you're going to just allow this song to just minister to you she sings. Father we just come before you we lift up your name Father we say have your way we have plans but have your way Jesus. We thank you that you are coming in this place that you are already here. Father we pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people. It's all about you. It's not about the songs that we sing
goes along with what Jamie was saying about the prodigals. And as she sings this, I want you to receive this as your blessing today over your family and over your children. Today, I just feel like today is kind of out there for those who do not know Jesus as their Savior, for those in your life, for your children, for their blessings. Even if they know the Lord today, we just decree and declare this song, which is just scripture.
great is God. Look back. Sorry about that, but I got to touch that because I'm turning them out all the time. But uh, uh, the last one I think I used was for December 27th, 2020, rather. And I think this may be the first service. This is like the January 1st service for us. I've got it straight. And I'm excited about it. And I thought about the goodness of God and, and the opportunity that we have as individuals, as families, and as a church. And I'm excited about it. Praise the Lord. I know it's already whatever after time it is. Hey, if you're watching by internet, God loves you. And all these words were for you too. Take it to heart. Amen. And uh, we're just going to look at some scripture. I'm not sure how long I can be. I can be in here for an hour, but it won't be that long. Okay? I may just remember some of the points and come back and preach it another day. But tell me, stand together for the reading of the Word of God. You did. You couldn't come out in the rain anyway. It may not be raining now, but it was when some people came to church. And uh, God bless you for, for, for um, making it. Amen. That all weather kind of salvation that will get you where you need to be with the Lord. And this is one verse of Scripture first in the Amplified Bible, then in the Contemporary English Version Bible. This takes place. Israel has already been set free from Egyptian captivity. They have already gotten to the place where they're now at the Red Sea. And to their horror and dismay, they look behind them, and here comes this vast Egyptian army. And uh, these people start panicking, and then they start whining and complaining. Then they start blaming God and Moses. And, uh, and uh, Moses takes all this to the Lord. These people are about ready to stone me. So here's the Lord speaking to Moses in Exodus 14, 15, first the Amplified Bible. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Contemporary English version. The Lord said to Moses, why do you keep calling out to me for help? Tell the Israelites to move forward. Easy to say that. Hard to do because they're going into deep water that's going to be over their head. And God already had a plan before they already got to the Red Sea. He had a plan long before that. And God has a plan for your life. I really do believe that. And we're going to, the, the title of this message is Forward From Here. Wherever you are, wherever your here is, forward from here. And I'm not talking about necessarily a geographical location. But I'm talking about forward in the will of God. Forward in fulfilling God's call upon your life. And forward, we look at even the church, fulfilling God's call yes. upon our church. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the word of God. It's just one verse out of your word so far. But what a powerful word it is from heaven. And I thank you that you still speak to people. I thank you that you still deliver people. And we've all got stories. Everybody's got a story. We might not know everybody's story, and everybody doesn't know our story, but we've all got a story. Every child of God's got a story. Lord, where you reached down and you delivered them and you lifted them up, and you still do that. Even this very moment, if there's someone who needs that kind of deliverance. And I thank you, God, that your grace is still real. Because of your grace, we have an opportunity to have a relationship with you. Because of your grace, we have an opportunity to come away from a life of sin and begin to live in the joy and the presence of the Lord. And Lord, because of your grace, we have an opportunity to move forward from wherever here is in you. And Lord, because of your grace. We thank you for the promise. It's in the word of God more than one time. That no longer do you remember our sins. When we confess them to you, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. That's what the psalmist David prayed after he committed a grievous sin. That burdened his life and heart and spirit. But in your grace, you heard his prayer. And he was able to do great things for the glory of God. So can we when we walk with you. And we thank you for it. And we thank you that no matter where he is, where here it is, we can go forward from here 
by your grace and with your help. In Jesus' name we thank you for it. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You gotta, you gotta get the picture here. It's easy to understand these people's panic. We panic probably for sometimes a whole lot less than that. You got the, the Red Sea before them and uh, the Israelite waters. I mean, the, the waters before the Israelites. And then you got in this group of Israelites, you got two groups of people. And we're all in one of those groups. One group of people were moved by only what they saw naturally, how it looks naturally, or even how it is naturally. It was what they saw. Here comes this enemy toward them, larger than life, in, in a rush to attack them and overcome them. And then you have another group. This is the group that also saw the same enemy, the same Red Sea. But in this group, they looked up and saw God. In one group was Moses. And as far as we know, in the other group was every one of the other Israelites. Moses knew God was able. And he makes these people a promise. And we'll get to that if I have time. What? He tells them, these people, this army, this enemy that you see, you're never going to see them again. You're going to move past this place. You're going to move forward from here. And you're going to get past this place. And you're never ever going to see or face this same enemy again. Our privilege is to be careful where we look. Wisdom begins, the Bible says, with the fear that is the reverential fear of the Lord. That's where wisdom begins. And and. Sometimes when you look at your, your, the things around you, the things that overcome you, all of us have strengths and weaknesses. We all do. And if it's, if it's one of those weak places that we have a problem with, a difficulty with, it is easy then to be dismayed. Uh, but there is this other group with spiritual vision, and I trust that you are in that group. If you're not, you can be. Amen. Now in Exodus 14, 13, this is the Amplified Bible. Here is what it looked like from heaven. Now what it looked like on earth was all the army, the, the desert, the Red Sea that was uncrossable. You know, all those things are, are what were on earth. But from heaven's perspective, it was a lot different than that. It, I, re, I think I mentioned this in one of the, the uh, videos for, uh, the, uh, for our online ministry. But Anna Ray was doing some homework in one of her classes in, in college. It's a Bible type class. And so I'm supposed to be helping them, but of course I have no idea how to do that. I got, when, it, when Anna Ray got to the fifth grade, that was the end of me helping her with her homework, a lot smarter than a fifth grade. So anyway, we're doing this stuff, and I learned about a guy named Bo Ethius. Never heard of him before. Bo Ethius is a guy who looks at God a certain way. Go with Bo Ethius has this theory that God sees everything all at the same time as though it were all happening that instant before him. That is, when we look at time, that God is not like us. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years with us, you know, and that, that a thousand years with us is like a day with the Lord. But Boethius says that there's no, no time with the Lord. There's only time with human beings or our own earth, on the creation, but not with God. God always was and God always will be. And so he sees it all in a moment. The, the, I don't know if that's exactly true or not, but it was very interesting and I wouldn't be surprised. I just had never heard that before. But I know this. That God already had a plan before Israel ever had a problem. Yes. I believe that God has a plan before the problem ever shows up. Yes. I believe that God can make a way even when it looks like there is no way. Yes. The people who only saw what they saw naturally would have said there is absolutely no way. Yes. Nobody can swim across that river yes. and look at that vast army, that military force rapidly approaching. There is absolutely no way. Lives. 
at this rate, we'll be here all day. At this rate, I'll be here all day. Everybody else will leave. <laughs> How do you go forward from circumstances that you're having to manage that are ongoing, that are very difficult? You ever noticed about circumstances or problems, it's easy to give somebody else advice. You could just tell them exactly what to do. <laughs> The problem is us giving us advice sometimes. Sometimes that's not so easy. But God is still real. Listen, how do you go forward from here? You have to remember some things. Remember, first of all, that the Lord's hand is upon us. We, this, this morning, this, the presence of God in this place is yes. testimony enough. The Lord's hand is upon us. Yes. God's hand is upon us. I believe the hand of the Lord. Is on your life if you're a child of God. Yes. I believe even greater than that. Even before I got saved, when I was lost and doing all kinds of things I didn't need to be doing, that were going to bring me nothing but sorrow and and keep me in. Hey, if you if you do dope, you do alcohol, you can you making somebody else rich and somebody else's family rich, and you're making yourself and your family stay in poverty. Don't do that. That's not wise. Amen. But even when I was lost, I believe the hand of God was upon me. Amen. And, 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 and I thank God that it was. How do you know that the, the, the Lord's hand is upon us? For the child of God, I have found that even in the greatest difficulties, there is the joy of the Lord. There's not joy naturally. Not joy in what you can see. Not joy in what you can feel. But there is joy in the Lord. That's what the Bible says about Jesus. Who endured the, the cross, despising its shame for the joy that was set before him. He, he saw it all before he came to earth. He told his disciples over and over, I'm going to be crucified or I'm going to be killed. And three days later, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to, to rise again. At a time, you know, and, and, and so he would tell them, oh, they never could understand it until it actually happened. But Jesus saw it. He saw past the cross. He saw past the, the difficulty. He saw past the rejection. He knew there would be a better day and a brighter day. Listen, even in the time we're living in, the COVID-19 or coronavirus is a major factor for a lot of people. I do trust from this point forward, and I can't promise that, but if God will help us, I hope we never close down at least morning worship on Sunday morning. And I, I hope and pray that God will help us to add the ministries back that we have missed all this time. Yes. Amen. But they may not look like we, they used to look, but we, we need to do yes. more than we're doing, and we can do it as a church. Other people do. Yes. So I believe in God for great things. And besides that, Brenda and I have already got appointments to be vaccinated with the Moderna vaccine, so we'll see how that goes. Amen. That's this Friday morning. So believe in God for that. You know, ever since I realized we would be coming back to church today, I was so excited. I, this morning I looked out early and the rain was pouring down. You know, at one time, early in my ministry, I used to be dismayed with the rain. I think when the rain comes, you preach harder and you try more. That's what you do. Don't give up and don't give in to it. Believe God for greater. Amen. God's hand is upon us. Even in uncertain times, God still blesses us. Why are you blessed in uncertain times or in difficult times? Because the hand of the Lord is upon you. God is a, a way maker. A, a, the way may not be as clear as we would like for it to be, but I still remember John 4, 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He still is, and He always will be. Praise God. The Lord is good, and He cares for us. Listen. The Lord's hand is upon us. And I'll just share one more thing, part of that, and I'll quit. This part two of five or six. Amen. And then, listen, the, the second reason we can move forward from where we're here is, is because all of us have promises. I would say that God has kept His promises to me, even when I did not want to preach, even when I was trying to avoid preaching. I tried to youth pastor as hard as I could playing gospel groups as hard as I could, leading youth group as hard as I could, deacon work as hard as I could, and 
God was never satisfied with it. And I began to, 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 to realize this is not working. And so I finally gave in to the call to preach. And I've shared this too many times, but God said that He would go with me if I would go. And I will tell you, there have been times my heart has been broken. There has been times my spirit has been crushed. There have been times that if by my feelings I would like to have given up and quit and walked away. But I can tell you that God has kept His promise to me and God will keep His promise to you. James Version. Promise from the Lord. And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Got it? Um, this is today's English Version 31 8. And I'll try to quit. The Lord Himself will lead you, lead, L-E-A-D, lead you. He will not fail you or abandon you. So do not lose courage, like even if it rains, or be afraid. Yes. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. That's in the New Testament. Just like that same promise yes. of God. The same promise of God that's in the Old Testament is still the same promise of God in our time, and it applies to us. I would suggest you claim it as your, if you don't have a promise from God, why not claim that as your promise? Amen. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. Listen, we have promises. Here's, here's a great promise. I don't, I don't have any sermons have been preached from this one verse in Jeremiah. I read the Bible through it until that book came out. I didn't, I Looked over. Now I preached a bunch of sermons from it. And here's the verse again in my favorite version, the New International Version. Not my favorite version, but my favorite version of this verse. It's Jeremiah 29 11. We all know it. Let's read it together. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. If you're here today and you're Job, you and I cannot see the Lord 
no matter how much we need to. He said, I look to the left, I look to the right, but I cannot see him, but God could see Job. And God knew where Job was in his despair. It didn't fix anything on earth. But God blessed Job when it was all over with because Job was faithful when it wasn't easy to be faithful. And when, you, when, it, when it's not easy to be faithful, sometimes that's the time you need to have the most faith and try to hold on to the Lord and keep moving in the right direction so you can go forward from the hill that you happen to be in at that very moment. Job did keep going, and good news. The Lord showed up with miracles, restoration, and a double blessing. It was worth it all. Praise the Lord. This ain't going to help you. I'm at the bottom of page 409. And I quit. As, my, as our musicians come, why can we go forward from here? The third thing is, in our church, we're no longer trying to be dead free. And we're doing some things already. We're going to be doing some more things. I'm not very excited about that. Some of the technology we've had to deal with for so long. Our, our multimedia ministry, that is our levels for trying to work with what we're having to work with back there. We're going to get that fixed. But it's not just doing stuff. It's about ministry as well. And I believe in God we're going to be able to do some things we need to do that we haven't been able to do. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to trying to develop a life group ministry that will be viable and will be working. Amen. For us to go, or for you to go forward from the here that you happen to be at, keep praying. Keep planning forward. Always plan forward. I've always got a plan. I'm always looking past wherever we are. It'll be a long time. It might be three years, but one day we'll have a van with the, by the Lord's grace and help and your vote when that time comes. Instead of the straight seats we now have, we'll have 13 captain's chairs in the back and captain's chairs, I think, in the front. I don't know how about the front, but I know about the back. So that's just that. We already have the gutters replaced on the church, so when you come over the drive-thrus, you don't get water poured all over you. But we're planning to pass that to ministries, food distribution, and some other stuff. All of it takes time. Here's what you do to go forward from here. Keep doing what you know is right. Keep trusting the Lord. Always believe God for greater. I always believe God for greater, no matter what I see. Keep doing what you can do just because you can't do as good as everybody else or anybody else or don't think you can. You can do something. Keep doing what you can do for the Lord. Listen. In the, in the process, here's what will happen. You'll keep standing with the Lord's work. Thank you for everybody who gives. We don't receive offerings and collection plates. We give us in the collection box back there or online, different ways, like a lot of people are doing. Amen. You keep serving. Ask not what your church can do for you. <laughs> Ask what you can do for your church. Thanks, John Kennedy. Keep on giving, and it's not just money, but time, talent. Keep reaching out. Nothing takes the place of your personal invitation. If you know somebody who's not in church, somebody who's not saved. I'm glad that people didn't give up on me when I didn't accept any of their invitations, including Brenda's, I don't know how many times. Keep spreading the gospel, and we're going to do that here in church and online and in the mail. Let's stand together, if you will. Praise God. I looked up the definition of, of going forward. It means to continue to continue doing stuff. Do the right stuff. Keep it up. And it means to proceed to move ahead towards Him. You can move forward from here, wherever here is in your life, not necessarily geographically, but spiritually. Father God, thank you for the privilege we have to be in the Lord's house on a Sunday morning. I'm glad that we came to church today. I'm glad that so many people were not moved by the rain that was pouring. And there's something we just cannot get out of that. I understand that. But I'm thankful for all those of you who got here early today to practice songs. Here early to work with multimedia. And I thank you, God, 
Be not 